What's better than an ego? A super ego. And what's better than a super ego? How about the super ego plus? Let's dig in. So there's what this pedal does, and then there's what this pedal does. So that whole first demo was based around a chord progression with each chord being sort of an anchor point. And I'd play the chord, hit the bypass button to freeze it, and then hold that chord so I could noodle around over it until the next frozen chord. And I wanted to start off with that demo because I think it quickly shows the freeze, synth, and effects features of this pedal. But definitely stick around for the second jam because I really like that one too for entirely different reasons. This one comes in as a request from Turnus Guitar, and while I can't follow up on every request, this one definitely caught my attention, and we can all extend a big thank you to Zounds for getting this baby out in the mail to me so we can find out what it's all about. After spending about a week with this pedal, I think we should start with some drawings. All right, so the signal comes in and then something, either a button press or the signal hitting a certain threshold is going to tell the pedal to sample that signal and then morph it into that airy synth pad. Then we've got these attack and decay knobs. The higher you set the attack, the slower the synth pad takes to appear. And the higher the decay knob is set, the longer it hangs around. And if you set it all the way up, the signal will hang around until the next freeze or until we bypass the pedal entirely. <laughs> This section over here with the white knobs is the effects section, and we've got a ton of options here. Rotary, phase, echo, flange, filter, pitch shift, lots of good stuff. And we select the effect with this knob on the bottom, and we use these two knobs to select the different parameters for the effect. The middle button here turns the effects section on and off, and these effects only affect the frozen synth portion of the signal. Super important to getting the most out of this pedal is right here, the modes. 
These are how the pedal knows when it's freezing time. So in moment mode, it freezes whatever's being played the instant this switch gets pressed down and it's gonna hold that until we let it go. And just so you know what's going on in these clips here, I'm using the external control jack right up here with this Digitech FS3X foot switch. And that lets me keep this up on my desk and this down on the floor. Very handy. You can also use a single momentary foot switch like the Boss FS5U or the FS7. I like this one right here. Um, when you're using a single button foot switch, that lets you control the bypass. When you have a three one, like the FS3X, lets you control all three. And also so you know what's going on here, when you see the red light come on in the clips, that means the button is down. And when it's flashing, that means that I've let it come back up and it's winding down in the decay phase. I also threw in a little bit of rotary effect just to keep it interesting. Latch mode is like a moment mode, but we don't have to hold down the pedal. It grabs the signal when it's hit and it lets it run its course until you hit it again. And listen for the sliding transition between the frozen notes here. That's the gliss feature. And I think it works pretty well right here. Sustain mode works a little differently. It starts listening from the time you press the button down to the time you come off it, and it'll hold anything that hits the threshold set by the threshold knob right here. The higher you set this knob, the easier it is to trigger it. So you'll see me playing three notes dry, and then I'll hold the button down so you can listen for the notes that pass through unaffected, followed by the notes that hit the threshold and get frozen. Auto mode is basically the same as sustain mode, but we don't have to hold the button down. When we're in auto mode, we can bypass the effect temporarily by holding the bypass button down, or we can double tap it and that will bypass the effect until we turn it back on again. Now, remember before when I said that these effects are only for the frozen wet signal, and then I pointed at the asterisks over there? Yeah, that's not entirely true. In live effects mode, we bypass the whole synth portion of the pedal so we can use it like a multi effects box. Because, you know, Sometimes you just want a flanger. Now I save these two for last because they're kind of like the icing on the top of the cake. Let's say we're going back and forth between two chords as our frozen synth samples. 
layer is how much of that first sample is going to go forward into the second sample. And gliss, which is short for glissando, is how drawn out do we want that pitch transition between them to be. Too much of either of these can make it sound a little muddy, but it's also a really nice way to mask or smear those transitions. I mentioned the external control jack over here. It also has an expression pedal jack over here. And with that, you can go between two different sets of settings on these knobs, which kind of gives us two presets, kind of. And then there's the effects loop. This is an extension of the built-in effects. So if you have a special ring mod or your favorite flanger, you can throw it into the loop here and now you've got that. Now. If you want some effects on your dry signal without it affecting the frozen signal, you could do something like this. Take the send and the out and treat those as the wet and the dry, and then mix those together with a mixer pedal like a Boss LS2 or perhaps an Electroharmonics Tri Parallel Mixer. Let me know if you want a deeper dive on this thing. I think it could be really interesting but I also see how it might be not. Electroharmonics has a whole lot of clever wordplay and references in their pedal names. The mainframe is a bit crusher. Good vibes is a univibe. The hot wax is what happens when you mix hot tubes with a crayon. The big muff so anyway, I was curious if there was anything behind the name Super Ego here. There's the id, those are our core instincts and desires. The ego, our rational thoughts and self-preservation. And then the Super Ego, which is how we judge ourselves, good and bad. And part of that is this concept of the ideal self, the guiding light that helps us stay true to our principles. Maybe that beautiful, airy synth sound represents our instrument's ideal self. Or maybe Super Ego is just a really epic sounding name, and they didn't want to wind up with the Freeze, the Super Freeze, and the Super Freeze Plus. Yeah, it's probably that. For the first guitar in there, I use the detune setting of the live effects mode all by itself. And for the second guitar, I wanted something where that first initial dry note would hit 
and then have that synth pad kind of bloom and evolve all around it. So I sent it to auto with a medium threshold and a delay effect. I think this is a fantastic alternative to the standard looper pedal for someone who just wants to go out and perform live. Being able to kick off that rich synth pad sound with just a single note is fun and unique and makes you feel all powerful, but it also gives you a lot of opportunities to fine tune the sound and how it reacts to your playing. Basically, what I'm saying is if I go out and I see one of these on someone's pedal board, they have my full attention. And if you're in the market for one of these or any piece of gear, definitely make sure you check out the Zounds affiliate links down in the video description if you can. Zounds are big supporters of the show and we thank them for that. Now, I've got one more video planned for the end of this year. And trust me, it certainly is a video about a pedal. I'm just going to leave it at that. In the meantime, you take care, and I'll catch you on the next one.